Hello everyone and welcome to Stitches and Prayers by the Yarny Goodness Podcast. My name is Pam and I am going to be talking about some knitting and crocheting today. Um, I am coming to you from outside of St. Louis, Missouri. I am recording this episode on Wednesday, August 9th. Today is, um, it's very rainy and muggy outside. Um, when I left to work, it was uh, just misty rainy. But it's very hot. It's still muggy. Um, today is the first day I've been awake when it's rained. I guess it's rained of those times this week, but I'm not positive. Um, but it's been just hot. Hot. Um, I don't know what happened with last week's episode. I recorded a full episode. Um, I recorded 45 minutes. I cut it down and edited it down to, I don't know, 25 or 30 uploaded it to the to YouTube and set it up for it to uh, post all on its own I went to bed and never even looked at it again which is my fault I should have looked at it again um, and then my daughter messages me she's like mom what's what's wrong why is the podcast only five minutes I don't know so but anyways grab yourself something to drink and let's get started. So today I'm going to do some chit chatty before the podcast starts. Um, I was going to talk about what happened, but you know, you didn't know. Um, I have, let's see, um, I've told you about how my husband coaches a baseball team. Last Thursday was um, the playoff game, and it was an it was an amazing game. Um, we play in the Park League here, and they were they they played up. Um, we have young kids. We have like nine-year-olds, ten-year-olds on the team. It's supposed to be like 11, 12-year-olds. So we have a few younger kids, and we've got the 12-year-olds. And they had to play up into the, the next category because there was no kids in our league. And so we, um, we won the playoff games. And then the, you know the two, there were four teams. The two play the two winners went to the championships. We got to go to the championship. That was last Thursday. It was an amazing game. The kids played their little hearts out against 13, 14, 15 year old kids, and they were winning till like the last inning. Um, <coughs> They were winning to the last inning. Um, I want to say it was like oh, it was six, six to three, six to four. It was something, something like that. And we were winning. It was exciting. Um, and then something happened. The kids got their heads out of the game, and they scored four runs, and we lost by one. So, but anyway, so they came in second. That's still amazing to do with those. Um, with the with the with the older kids and they the older kids have been playing together since they were in t-ball so they had you know they they played as a team they knew what to do they knew to back this the the when the catcher's off the pitcher runs in i don't know if you play baseball you know what i'm talking about right so there's that um then saturday friday was just at home saturday i um Spent the day with my husband and one of our grandchildren, and we went to um, Eckert's, which if you're around from around this area in southern Illinois, southern central Illinois, um, it's a like an apple orchard, and uh, you can go out and pick apples and peaches and all kinds of different fruits and. 
So we spent the, a little bit of time there. It was still a little bit early to be going out there. Um, there was definitely no apples, but there were there were peaches to be picked. We just didn't go out and get any peaches. We just wandered around the little store that's there, and uh, then we left, and we went to eat at the Loading Dock, which is a restaurant that's on the Mississippi River. Everybody's always talking about this place, like it's, you know, some great restaurant, and it's it's really not. So it wasn't all that everybody hyped it up to be. I was not impressed whatsoever. So um, I did take some pictures or uh, in some video. Um, I'll sh I'll share it with y'all. And then we took her to the splash pad, and of course I have my knitting or crocheting. I take crocheting because I took crocheting with me. Um, and so I'll post pictures of that as well. Um, I'm always knitting and crocheting in public. I don't care. I do it all the time. I don't wait for the one day a year that's knitting in public day. And then Sunday there was starting my new, my new work week. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into some finished objects. What I've got is something for Project Marv. Here it is. There it is. It, there's half. I'm not going to unfurl the whole thing. Here's half of it. It stays the same. Right there we go. One more blanket for Project Marv in the books. Um, my parents were coming into town next, they were coming in next week. Um, my dad had some knee surgery, get better well, get better soon, daddy, I miss you. Um, he had some knee surgery, so he's not able to make the trip yet. So, but, um... On the Project Marv note, I ordered my labels. And I'm so excited to get these sewn on. And then um, I ordered them on Amazon. If you look up uh, personalized labels, you'll be able to find them. And this is what I've got. I can't see behind my hand. So I ordered those, and each blanket. Besides the five I've already given to Grandma, are going to get these put on there. I just thought that was something sweet. So that everybody knows what they were made for. Um, my sister and my daughter, I think, are making some too. So I might give them a couple that they can just sew onto their blankets. Because there's 50 here. And that's, that's quite a few. So there's that. I still have to do that with those. Um, I used this Eco Brights. It's a loops and threads. It was a limited time offer and it is made out of recycled um, plastic. It's very soft and squishy and warm because that thing was on my lap and it it was making me nice and warm. So um, this was, yeah, I want to say two years ago. It might have been three years ago I, I bought these. I'm not positive about how long ago. But it, it, it says it's made from recycled plastic. But then right here, it says that it's recycled polyester. I guess polyester and plastics are probably the same. I don't remember. I wasn't al I, I was alive. But, um... I don't remember wearing polyester in the 70s. If, if, you, if you did, if you were alive and you wore polyester in the 70s, comment below and let me know. I'm always excited for that. But anyways, um, I made it. It's orange and aqua and purple. And I don't think that they were creative with the colors. I think those were just the names. Um, I don't even know if you can find it anymore. So there is that. Then, if you will remember a couple podcasts ago, I had these squares 
from my neighbor who passed away. I have since sewn the, the four, I had nine of them, so I have one still, I think it's, I think it's down here. I have one left, one lone square, and I'll use it for something. But yeah, so I sewed four together for both sides, and then I just um, crocheted, um, I want to say it's like 20 for the, for the sides so they could, could be in depth. I'm just going to, I think I'm going to use it just for a um, project bag. But I am going to line it. And I did look through my fabric and I found the perfect. Um, if you know me at all, I am a huge Harry Potter fan. And so I have some Harry Potter fabric that came from uh, Walmart. I do believe this way. There we go. And it's just one of those like fat quarters that they sell for like 99 cents. This came in a bundle. It was like $5.99 for like seven or eight different patterns. But I thought this, even though it's you know, the flowers and everything, but <clears throat> I thought that matched perfect. I mean, it's just lining, but I really thought that that matched perfect. So I'm going to figure out a way of doing that. I haven't done it yet, as you can tell. But I thought that matched perfect. I really liked it. And that's another project. I mean, it is finished. I can use it just like this. But I'm going to put that in there. And I don't know if I'll show it to you again or not, but it's that's what I'm doing. That is it on finished projects. And so we will move on to works in progress. So um, I still have my, um, I didn't bring it in here. I haven't worked on it at all. Chase's cardigan, Chase's Douglas Cardi. I need to get working on it. If I remember right, I have one sleeve done. And I need. I've picked up stitches to be working on the other one. I just. I haven't. I haven't done it. Maybe I'll work on it a little bit this weekend because I'm a little upset about some of my other works in progress or whips. Um, I know somebody asked me about what are whips. Whips are works in progress. I've been trying not to use the little acronyms and actually use the words. But this one, um, I did show it on the last podcast, and I don't know if it made it in the five minutes, but this is a um, another Project Merv blanket. Um, probably halfway through. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm half double crocheting. It's all acrylic yarn, and all I did was all of the little balls that I had, I just made into this big, huge ball. Like, there's all kinds of different colors in there, and all of my scraps, I just um, started winding it up, and then I tie a knot and leave a long string for me to weave in the ends. That's what I do on all of my scrappy blankets, but yeah, and I've got this one and I think I've got two more that are probably about twice the size I think I've got one full one in this and then there's this I think uh, it was like right down in here where I started the new the new ball I am um, all of it is red heart yarn that was all scraps and just little pieces um, from, from different projects over years, um, but yeah. And I am using my five millimeter hook and it's a boy hook. And I'm trying to think, I think I chained 110, maybe 115. What I do is I chain and I hold it up there loosely. And I'm like, yup, that's wide enough. 
and I go from there. <laughs> There's no, no special art or science to it. But um, I'm excited to get those done, get them all put up, waiting for hopefully my dad and my stepmom will be coming down sometime in the near future. Now on to something that's very depressing. And I'm talking about my Vesper. And this is what happens when you don't gauge swatch. So, and I've talked about this. And I was fully aware that this could happen. I did finish the body. And I'm at an arm. I'm going to put it on. I'm going to put it on. It's, it's like it swallows me. And look how wide this is. This is what I was talking I talked about this in last week's episode about how wide the neck was and I wasn't happy about it. And I was probably going to take this out and or, and or, uh, well, I was probably going to take it out and then re-knit this part um, to make it wider so that it took up more room here because I didn't like this. And then I finished it off, and I finished off the body, and I put it on. Well, I didn't even finish off the body and put it on. I finished off the body, and I immediately started working on the arm. And it, like, I feel like it just swallows me up. I feel, I feel like it's five sizes too big. So... Um, what I'm going to do is re-knit it. I'm going to take, I'll be taking, I'll, I'm just going to re-knit from this. I'm going to take the arms off back to where I joined the arms. Because even, even, I mean, even I could handle all of this being the, as big as it is, I think. But I can't. I can't get the arms smaller. I think the arm starts way too low. I think I needed to start up in here for the arm. I don't know. Yeah, I think I needed to start up in here. About right in here. Maybe here. So I think I'm going to go up one, two, three, four stripes. I think I'm going to start right here at my arm. And then I'll have longer to decrease because you de you yeah, it's a free pattern. Um, you decrease every other round when you're going around and so that it'll be smaller because this is too big. And I don't think that if I did a rapid decrease here that it would look, I don't know, that it would look right. I mean, I still, I still have, um, cause that's, like two more to put on and then a cuff. But yeah, so I knew going into this that I might have to redo it up because Pam does not gauge swatch. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this off though. It is, the pattern was written to be used with fingering weight yarn. This is not fingering weight yarn. The yarn I'm using here is, uh, this is part of a four pack. It's super wash merino and it's worsted weight. Now granted, it's not a heavy gauge worsted weight. It is on the finer, um, I would say more of a sport weight 
feel and look to it. It's not, you know, the regular, um, well, I don't know, maybe, I guess maybe it is. Looking at, like, this red heart next to it, I don't know, you're going to be able to see it. But maybe it is very close to the same, same width. Maybe I'm wrong in that. But I knew. I knew going in that, and because for my dimensions, for my bust size, and with the positive ease that she calls for in that sweater, I should have knit the third size if I was using the right needles, and if I was using the right yarn, <laughs> I should have used the third size. I didn't gauge swatch. That was what I wanted to use, so that's what I used, and it's too big. My bad. I knew going in that I might have that issue. Now, I might, ooh, 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 here's what I can do instead. I can just take it back. I don't have to take the whole thing and re-knit the whole thing, right? I can just take it back and re oh, I didn't even, why did I not think of that? Why did I not think of that? Why did I think I needed to start out well because I don't like the neckline? I don't like the neckline, but I can always do something different with the neckline. I can always do what I was going to do to begin with and take out the neckline and pick up those stitches and re-knit just the neckline. What do I want to do? Do I want to re-knit the whole thing to make it the way that I want it? Because I don't know... Um, I don't know. I guess I could always, yeah, I can, I'll figure it out. I think I'm going to re-knit, I'm re-knitting it. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to re-knit it. There we go. Let's see how much progress I make on it by next week. Because I really want it, and I want to take it on the cruise with me is what I want. Um, because they, they keep it cold on the inside of the, of the, you know, all the, the main dining rooms and everything. And me and my husband are going on a, on a cruise in 45 days. I'm so excited. <laughs> so excited. So, but, oh, and um, this is my Vesper, that is my Vesper sweater. It is by Mick Pearly Knits. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the pattern. That is all Pam. <laughs> all Pam right there. Those mistakes... That mistake of uh, the wrong, and I knit it in the in the smallest size she offers. It's just that's all Pam. It's the wrong needles. It's the wrong yarn. It's the whole wrong all together Pam. And okay, I'll own it. It's fine. That. So I only have the one blanket, the sweater, and Chase's. Um, cardigan. That's all the projects I've got on the needles. Um, I've really been working on, um, like I said, up until this week, my parents were coming in, so I was trying to really work on getting the um, Project Marv blankets done. So now that I know that that's on the back burner, I can pull my other project that I'm really wanting onto the front burner and wait a few, you know, wait a little while. I do have, I think that the purple and the orange one makes five more blankets that I've done uh, for Project Marv. Um, while we're kind of talking about Project Marv, I know, I kind of, do, do, squirrel, gone. Oh, I'm all over the place. But while I am on the subject of Project Marv, if you are interested in helping me um, in that endeavor, Project Marv Marv Pace was my grandfather. Um, I loved him dearly. After he passed back in February, my grandmother asked me to make up some blankets for the nursing home that took care of him in the last days of his life. 
And of course, she could not get those words out of her mouth fast enough before I answered her and said, yes, Grandma, it's done. How many do you want? Um, so she didn't know how many exactly she wanted and da 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 da. So she, um, I told her, I said, fine, I'll just make them up and, and go from there. Whenever, um, she's 90, 90 something. Grandpa was 95. So I do realize that she will be joining him soon. And um, once she's gone, hopefully in 20, 25 years. <laughs> That's what she keeps telling me. Um, hopefully I will still be in uh, the able to make blankets and then I, my tags will say Marvin and Donna face. Um, and I will continue to do it instead of sending them back to Michigan where I'm from and where my grandmother lives, I'll just donate them here to nursing homes in my area to uh, keep them warm. So with that being said, let's talk about, I did find, this is my only acquisition this week. I don't, I love these things. It's just, it's what I'm making my sweater out of. It's the Karen Latte Cakes. And I just, I love the, um, I bought the last two at my Michaels. It's like mohair, but not as expensive. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not cheap, but I am frugal. And if it doesn't have to be $35, then I'm not buying it for $35. So, to me, this is just as nice as the uh, expensive stuff. If I'm sorry if you have a different opinion. I, on this podcast, I do use, um, I mean, I did have a knit crate. Knit crate was the extent of my high-end um I don't have any yarn stores in my area that I'm aware of. I cannot find any. I have Googled and looked and looked and looked for uh, a local yarn shop. I do not have a local yarn shop. Um, if you are from the St. Louis area or the Illinois St. Louis area and you do know where there's a yarn shop, drop the link below. Drop... Um, not even the link, just the name of it below. I'll look it up. I'll find them. I'm not a huge shopper, but I would love to, every once in a while, know where I can go get some. Um, nice hand-dyed, you know, yarn, please. So, um, trying to think. I'm looking around at my thing. I was going to talk for a second about um, going when going into the the prayers you know part of the podcast. Um. So I've never really talked about my Christian journey, and so mine starts at the age of ten when I went to church camp. My grandmother, like my mom was raised in church and then when her and my dad got married, they fell out of church. And My grandmother, um, my mom's mom, would pick me up when she was in town. So they went to Florida in the winter time, but in the summertime she would go to church and so she would pick me and my sister up. And I think she started at like eight years old. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I can remember being like eight or nine and going to church, um, and you know, hearing the, the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me, and, uh, all of those, and I have very fond memories of our, um, youth she wasn't a youth pastor because it was it was a, a Baptist church and they don't believe in women ministers. Um, junior junior church leader, I think, is what her title was. Um, and uh, I loved her to death. 
and she has since, um, I want to say a year and a half ago, um, went home to be with the Lord. And uh, I'm so jealous that she's there. But um, I can remember I was probably, I don't know, it was by my 12th birthday that um, I was going to church camp. And that was a week away from home, um, way up. It was way up. It was not even 45 minutes from my home. But it felt like I, it took forever to get there. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have something in my throat. And so I started going to church camp. And I remember um, that very first night, them doing the altar call and, you know, gripping the seat in front of me where while all of my friends, you know, they sang, you know, I surrender all. And all of my friends that I had made that day um, start, you know, they all go up to the altar because they had been going for a couple of years because you can go when you're um, eight, I think, is the youngest you could go to this church camp. And here I was, you was either 10 or 11. Because they had two church camps. They had junior church camp and senior church camp. So you went from like 8 to 13 or 14 to junior and then um, like whatever age to 18 was senior church camp. If I'm remembering correctly, because I went, I went for quite a few years and I think I went until I was 18, but I'm not positive. I'm not positive. It gets fuzzy. Um, but yeah, grandma started taking us to church and then while I was at church, I heard about the church camp. So I wanted to go to church camp. We were at church camp and you know, all of my friends go up to the altar and they're all up there and I'm like, what in the world are they doing? But I could feel like I wanted to go because all of my friends were going, but I didn't go. And I, I remember it was probably the third or fourth night of our five nights that we were gone that um, I did finally succumb to the, that Holy Spirit that was telling me to go and uh, ask Jesus to come into my life and to be my Lord and Savior. So that was, I was probably 12, and it's this time of year is when we were going. <clears throat> it was always like the first two weeks of August is when church camp was. So I always think about it at this time of year that um, sometime, I can't remember the exact date, but sometime within the first two weeks of July is my 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 savior, my, my saving birthday. I don't know what you would call it, but my, uh, my Jesus birthday. <laughs> so when we would come back from church camp, of course, I was all on fire for Jesus and wanted to continue to, um, go to church. Well, but October was just around the corner when grandma and grandpa were going to Florida. So for a couple of years, um, Grandma, or, uh, um, I'm sorry, for a couple of years, I would only go during the summertime. And then, you know, when I wanted, I wanted to be there, I wanted to be there, I wanted to be there, so I would bug my, my mom and my dad. So finally, I don't know how old I was when they both, my, first it was mom, um, started coming, taking us to church, because, you know, grandma would come over and pick us up, but... And then mom, mom started taking us. She finally, I guess, got tired of, of me wanting, of me asking her if she was going to take us to church. And she got up on Sunday morning and she took us. And she went with us and she stayed. She didn't just drop us off and, and leave. And then um, slowly but surely dad joined us at church, which, which was wonderful. And within, within no time, we were there for all three services. We were there for Sunday morning. We were there for Sunday night. And we were there for Wednesday, and it wasn't a question on what you were doing on Sunday or what you were doing on Wednesday because Sunday and Wednesday were both church days. We came home from school on Wednesday during the school year, and we knew to hurry up and get our, our homework done because that was not an excuse to not go to church. You know, when you're, when you're tired and you just don't want to go when you get into those teenage years. So, but then... Um, you know, the, the devil gets at you, and um, certain things happened in my life. I decided, you know, that a boy was more important, and uh, at the age of 18, I was pregnant and married. 
Um, he was my high school sweetheart. We didn't go to the same high school. We met at a campground up in Michigan, and uh, we started dating my senior year. And by the fall after I graduated, I was in you know my first year of college. I was I was pregnant, and a couple months after that, we were married. Um, so by the age of 19, I was a mom to a beautiful baby girl. And um, later on that same year, <laughs> I was separated from her father. And it took us five years to get divorced. You know, neither one of us really um, had the money to do so. We didn't have the, you know, we didn't have the means. We were both living at home with our parents. We were both, you know, working and doing whatever we could to survive. And it took about five years for, I mean, we had decided we decided that until we figured out what we wanted to do, if, what, if we wanted to find somebody else or what or whatever, it was only going to be find somebody else, um, that neither one of us really had the money to divorce. So we would wait until we found somebody else and then we would figure out a way of getting it done. So my husband at the time, <laughs> um, he was dating his current wife. And uh, when he decided he was going to ask her to marry him, he uh, filed divorce papers, <laughs> which is fine. It's fine. Um, I went to his wedding. He came to mine when I married my husband. And even though he divorced me, I married my husband first, which is a story I've never told on here either because I had been you know, dating and dating and dating, trying to find somebody to spend the rest of my life with. And one day I just decided that I was done, that apparently I can't pick them. <laughs> and that um, in my prayers, I was praying that God would show me who he had prepared for me. And when he was finished preparing him, he was going to put him in front of me and hit me over the head and tell me, Pam, he's yours. He is the one that I made for you, explicitly for you, for nobody else, just for you. So this was in October of 97, I think. It was, 97, October of 97. I decided this. I started praying this prayer um, every day in my, in my prayer journal, in my prayer journey. I would make the prayer, Lord, whenever my husband is finished, whenever you're finished with him, you will put him in my path and you will hit me over the head with, you know, and tell me this is him. So that went on till January Fourth of that of of uh, ninety eight. I was standing in the vestibule of our church, and the way that it was set up was it was a long hallway, and there was a wall there. And I was standing there, and I was talking with somebody, and I was just so happened to be in front of the doors that opened up, you know, to of the church from the outside. And I'm standing there and I'm talking and I'm talking and I'm talking with this person. And all of a sudden the doors opened and I looked over. And all of a sudden it was, there was, I don't, I don't know how to describe it because there was an awning. So it wasn't like the sun was shining in to the church or on him, but there was a light shining on him. And I looked at him. And a voice in my head said, he's yours. Pam, he's done and he's yours. And so from then, that was January 4th of 1997. January 24th, he asked me to go see Titanic. Because <laughs> in Sunday school, I had made the comment that I wanted to see Titanic, but I didn't have anybody to go see it with, and I'm not going to go to the movies by myself. So January 24th, he called me up um, under the guise of talking to my stepfather, who happened to be our Sunday school teacher at the time. 
And I answered the phone. He asked for him, and I said, no, he's not here. You know, how can I help you? Or, you know, can I take a message? And, you know, he was like, Pam? And I was like, yeah. And so we started talking, and he asked me if I wanted to go see Titanic with him and his cousin. And I said, sure. So, you know, we went ahead, and we went... Um, Something happened, and the cousin backed out. So it just happened to be me, me, and, me and him. But um, and from that moment, moment on, we were inseparable. From that moment on, he came to my house after work every day. And we would spend a couple of hours in the evening together. Um, at the time, I worked at a circuit board company named Jabel. And so I had to be to work by 5 a.m., so... He would come over, spend a few hours, and then uh, then he would leave. So that was January 24th. We went, my grandparents' anniversary was February 10th. So on February 10th, um, we were hanging out, and I said, hey, it's my grandparents' anniversary. You know, and, it, and at that point, they were had been married for 50 years. And I said, you want to go um, celebrate my grandparents' 50th anniversary? I'm sorry, 48. 49? 40. I don't know, right in that area. I think it was 49. Crap. Why am I 48? 48. So they had been married for 48 years. So we went to my grandparents' house, and this was the first time he had in, been introduced to my grandparents. He didn't, hadn't met my father or my stepmother, so he was being introduced to them. He knew my my mom and my stepdad. So um, February 10th, we meet them. Then afterwards, we go back to my mom and stepdad's house where I'm living, and you know we're chit-chatting and everything, and we're watching a movie, and he just looked at me, and he's like, and we had already said I love you at this point. And uh, he looks at me, he's like, well, what do you think, Pam? You want to? And I said, you want to what? And he says, let's just get married. And I said, oh, okay. That was February 10th. We got married March 31st. And that was 25 years ago. Um, and I give all of it to God because he, God told me he was ready, but he really wasn't. He had a lot to happen still. A lot of training. I'm joking. I'm joking, Donnie. I love you. So, that's just my little life story there in a little nutshell. We are going to go into our Bible time now. Um... So, let's go ahead, and we are going to be reading out of Luke 12. I'm looking at my notes back there, by the way. Luke 12, 8 to 10. I'm going to read it out of the Rainbow, the King James Version Rainbow Study Bible. And then I will also be reading it out of the New Living Translation Touchpoint. So, Luke 12, 8 to 10, says, Also, I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it be forgiven him. But unto him that speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. So that was the King James Version. And this print is a little bit smaller, and I don't have my glasses, so let's hope this goes good. And this one says, And I assure you of this, if anyone acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I, the Son of Man, will openly acknowledge that person in the presence of God's angels. But if anyone denies me here on earth, I will deny that person before God's angels. 
Yet those who speak against the Son of Man may be forgiven, but anyone who speaks flat blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. I have nothing. I have nothing. I have nothing. Just, I will always acknowledge that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and he is the only way to heaven. All right? Let's say a prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, thank you for the time that you've given us to come together and talk a little bit about knitting and a lot about you. Thank you for the truths that you've given us. Thank you for the time that you've given us here on earth. Thank you for the blessings that you've given me and my family and, and everybody else. May they always remember the blessings and not the hardships, even though the hardships are what um, build us and strengthen us and make us lean more onto you. And we know those are the times that you will carry us through those troubles, like the, the poem Footprints in the Sand talks about. I pray that if there's anybody listening that does not know you as their uh, a savior that they will reach out either to me or to a church in their area and to ask questions and to ask you into their life it's as easy as saying lord i am a sinner and please come into my life and forgive me of my sins and i, I will confess you to the people in your precious name Amen. I really hope that you have a wonderful week. And until next time, please remember, this world is not our home. We're just a passing through. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye. In talking about Project Marv, I totally forgot to talk about the Kofi. Please, if you are interested in helping raise money for me to purchase more yarn for the uh, blankets for the nursing homes, I will put the code for my Kofi account somewhere on the screen. Um, but it is, you can go there by typing into your search bar, ko-fi.com forward slash stitches and prayers. And that should take you straight to my page where you can donate um, for that. I'm going to try to come up with some different things things so that there's like different tiers there's I haven't played with it much um you know for right now it's just at like three dollars per donation um you can set that up as a monthly or just a one-time donation so I don't know whatever your heart desires so that would help me I am running low on all of my scraps um so pretty soon it's going to be solid color blankets. Um, I do have a little bit, um, and there's a closet behind me that I've got a whole yard, a lot of yarn in. Um, so, yeah, pretty soon there'll be solid color, color blankets instead of scrappy blankets, but I love them. <laughs>